Hi guys, this is Jamie from Broadway World UK and we're here at the Queen's Theatre for an exclusive chat with David Thaxton. My name's David Thaxton uh, and I play Chabert in Les Miserables. So obviously you are no stranger to Les Mis. Can you <laughs> tell us a bit more about your journey with the show? Um, my journey with the show, my God. Uh, so basically I first, I mean I, I saw the show when I was young and you know before I got into Radiohead and things like that. I it was mad musical theatre geek when I was like 12 and I we wanted to see it in loads and I just remember thinking it was just awesome and, and wonderful and then I was many years later having been thrown out of Hull University and, and all sorts of stuff. I was at the Royal Welsh College of Music and Drama doing vocal studies, proper opera and I got a job doing the opening of the Wales Millennium Centre so I got two weeks off college and the guy that directed that is a guy called Ken Caswell who was the original Bishop of Dean in, uh, originally in the Barbican and he went on to direct a show in town and all over the world and I got a bit drunk at the after party and I said to him, oh Ken, I want to do something else in my life so he got me an audition for Miss Saigon there was a tour of Miss Saigon happening at the time he said, oh you'd be a great GI and I went along to that here, funnily enough um, and they said, you're not right for Miss Saigon but you are right for Les Mis. Give you a ring, uh, and I thought I'll never hear from them again. But they did, and six or something, seven auditions later, I got in, and so I left college and came to London to be in Les Mis. I was uh, playing Kofrak and Bamatawa, and I understudied Andrea Sandovich. You've got away from the show, come back and play different roles. Yeah. How has that experience been? Has it been quite weird? Because obviously you have a perception of a show, you've done it with a particular cast in a certain way, and then to come in and play yeah, someone else. Yeah, that, um, that's, that's, that's an, you make an interesting point there, actually. I mean, it's a great show for that, because as you uh, age as a person and as an actor, then there's something else in the show for, that suddenly you come into contact with and, and that you're right for. So it's, it's, I mean, it's fantastic from that point of view. Um, but you make a very interesting point about different casts and, and you, you learn, it's weird because you, everyone, I was talking to Sam Hiller, the director, resident director about this, and everyone who's been in this show has their own sort of ownership of, of Les Mis and what they think Les Mis is and what it should be and how it should be done. And, and, and that's nearly always informed by the people who been in it with. So everyone, I, I, know, for, I just know this is true, everyone will have their own, this is the person who's best at this and this is the person who's best at that. Um, so it's quite difficult, it's, it, it can be quite difficult if you have a really strong vision and you have these amazing experiences and you learn so much, and I've learned so much every single time I've, I've been here. Um, you, you, so when you come back it's, it's weird and you have to learn how to embrace new approaches and, and different things. I mean it, it helps that Every time I've come back, there's been someone here that I've done it with before. <laughs> so, and this time around with Killian Dunley as Valjean, it's, it's very cool because we were in it ten years ago when it was his. Yeah, Killian first came over from Ireland. It was the first job. He was a swing here when I was on drafts. So we um, we made friends. So it's, yeah, it's very cool. Uh, Love never dies. Uh, I did six months, and it was. It was fun. Um, it, they, were, they were a great cast. Um, it was very cool working with Ramin Karimnu. He's a lovely guy, and it was nice, really good getting to to play opposite him. Um, it was, it was, it was great. I, I, I had a very nice time. Um, it was, it was fun. And also, in 2011, you won your Olivier Award. Yes, it was, it was very cool. Um, it was very surreal, very odd thing. You don't ever. You, you know, you don't. Nobody goes into acting for awards or any of that kind of stuff. So it, it was, it was very a real honour. It was just an honour, such a cliche, isn't it? It was just an honour to be nominated. But it really was. It was such a, like I couldn't really get my head around it. And then, yeah, winning it was, it was really surreal. Um, but it was, that, that was, it was the coolest part about that whole experience was getting to meet work with Steve Sondheim. That was, you know, he's sort of a hero of mine. Still is. Obviously. Uh, that was here. He's he's great. He's really nice. W1 Workshops is um, a performance training company that my wife Nancy Sullivan and I set up. 2011, I think. Um, and it it snowballed from we did a performance class. One of Nancy's private students 
went to a song class with a couple of West End performers and she said she paid a fortune. She was up there for like two minutes and she said it was just a really rubbish experience. So she said, you and David should do one. So, so we, we tried it. So we, we charged half the money for half the people and twice the time. And it's, it's evolved and snowballed into this. It, it's something I'm just so incredibly proud of. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, it's basically our, our, our whole remit is about making top level acting and performance training affordable because it just isn't it simply it isn't it's uh, it's it's naked profiteering left right and center and and i just think that is it, that's not right we do acting for camera we do music theater stuff we do straight acting stuff we're uh, starting a years course 40 week three days a week part-time years course um which we're currently accepting auditions for um but yeah i would if anyone has an interest in performance training, in honing their craft, in getting on in the industry, come and see us because it's become something really, really, really cool. But, um, WMWorkshops.com. Um, uh, we're called Divisions. Um, we are five of us who we all went to school together, so we've all known each other since we were either 12 or 8 or 4, or in the case of Adam and Matt, 0 because they're brothers. Um, so, uh, and it, it all started, Matt and I were Really, we were really close at school, and uh, and we were always sat next to each other in music classes, and just do all our stuff together. And then we went away to uni and bought guitars, as you do, uh, in that horribly cliched way, and started writing songs. And, and so we started writing songs when we were 18, and we've sort of been at it ever since, on and off. Um, it's it has a sort of sporadic nature to it because it would be different if we were all. 17 years old and all lived on the same street but you know we're not we're all 35 and all five of us live all over the country so it's a bit like trying to get Monty Python in the same room um, and the five of us meet up but when we do it's totally worth it so we released an album um, a couple of years ago called Distance Over Time our second album we've written all the songs for it we're going to record it soon and hope to get that out this year um, so it, yeah, it's very 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 fulfilling very rewarding uh, and I, yeah I just love it and it's made all the more special because it's four people that I've known for so long. And I think it's very rare that you have friends that you've known since you were eight or four or whatever. So I think that's, that's a really cool thing.